Welcome to our tutorial about the corner seam tool. Here's my primary plate. Let's create a couple flanges for it. Let's say 5 millimeters. OK. And a second flange on this edge. Now let's activate the corner seam tool. Let's select the edges, first edge, second edge. The preview in green is where material will be added. The preview that we see in red is where it'll be removed. Right here we have three options, symmetric gap, overlap, and reverse overlap. Next to that we can set the percentage of the overlap anywhere from 0 to 1. That scale represents a 0 to 100% overlap. As you can see in our tree, the corner we've created is corner 3. The reason for that is because we've already got corners 1 and 2 up above. Let's double click on corner 3 to make some edits. I want to check out the second seam option, face, edge, distance. The three options we have in this mode are no overlap, overlap, and reverse overlap. To the right we have a scale similar to our previous scale. Let's enter 1, standing for 100% overlap. The gap size below is equal to the thickness of the material. Let's divide it by 2 to make the gap smaller. OK. Now let's see where that gap size value came from. Go to our Styles Editor. Under Sheet Metal Rules, Sheet Tab, we have a section called Miter Rip Seam Gap. Currently the gap size value is set to thickness. Let's cancel out of this window. And let's right click and delete corner 3. I'm going to make some edits to flange 2. Let's make the flange angle 45 degrees instead of 60 and click OK. Now activate the corner seam tool again. Let's select two edges. Let's change to overlap. And let's make the gap a quarter of the thickness. Divide it by 4 and click OK. As you can see, we've obviously got a problem. Let's add a work plane so we can sort this out. We'll select this edge and this edge. Go to Model, activate the Split tool, and select our plane. Now Trim Solid. Be sure the arrow is pointed in the right direction, and click OK. Let's undo that. And let's go make some changes to flange 2. Under height extents, let's select 2. Now we'll select this corner and click OK. Of course, the flange at 5 degrees has to be the second flange created, otherwise, you wouldn't have a reference point. As you can see, let me zoom in a bit. We've still got a problem here. Let's fix it with another sketch. Project Geometry, select this edge, and exit the sketch. Now activate the Cut tool, and select this edge. Change the direction, click OK. As you may have noticed, I've still got a problem with this corner here. We're going to have to make some more changes. Let's edit Corner 4, go to the Corner tab. Under Relief Shape, let's select Tier, and click OK. Now let's make some more changes to Corner 4, Corner tab. Let's check the Linear Weld option. OK. Let's make some more changes now. Let's try the Arc Weld option. Here's our preview. Click OK. Let me rotate it a little bit so I can see it a bit better. Let's double click on corner 4 again. I'd like to make the gap a little bit bigger. OK. OK, we're ready to flatten our part. 
Here's our preview. Let me show you one more thing. We'll fold up our part. Let's see what happens when you make the gap size too small or too tight. Let's try dividing the gap size by 6 and click OK. Some corner options may fail. And they'll fail in the flat pattern as you see here. As you can see, Inventor wasn't able to flatten our part. Let's go back to a folded part. And this concludes our tutorial about the corner seam tool.